Hello, everybody. Zero fossil fuel. Uh, I've just come in from uh, from snow blowing, about 12 inches of snow, and I am now out here in the garage, freezing my nuts off, uh, trying to put this pump together. I don't know if that's uh, dedication or insanity, but I wanted to show you. Uh, this is the this is the old motor that came off of the the uh, pump platform that's ready for the scrap heap. This is the new motor that took me a little while to find the wiring diagram. And you can see I actually stuck it and taped it to the side of the motor so I don't lose it again. The pulley that's on the end of the shaft uh, is a smaller pulley than the pulley that was on the original motor. Unfortunately, the, the V-belt size is the wrong size for this pulley. It's much too loose, as you can see. And the pulley from the original that I pulled the new electric motor off of, or the V-belt, is too small. I can't move the motor close enough to get around this thing. This pulley has a smaller shaft diameter than the shaft of the new motor. So I'm kind of stuck for tonight. I think what I'll probably do is just end up getting a new pulley to fit this V-belt so that it will spin the, the pump as, as fast as possible. Uh, this pulley is about half the size as the, the drive pulley as the, as the driven pulley. So if the motor spins at 17.25 RPM, that means that the uh, pump will spin at about 850 RPM. I don't know if that's too much or not. This pulley here is the reason that the original motor burned out, because this pulley is bigger than the original one that was originally sold with the pump. So I think the guy who owned this thing before me wanted the, wanted the pump to spin faster and work harder, only the motor didn't have enough horsepower to make it go. So. Maybe what I'll do is I'll get a, a pulley that's something in between these two sizes, and I'll bring it down to the hardware store uh, and fit it for a new pulley and a V-belt. So that's it for tonight. Can't really do a whole lot more, but uh, I want to show you that progress is being made, and uh, I am very anxious to show you what, what this thing is going to do when I start applying vacuum to the cell, and also should be easily retrofitted to an automobile. Sir Fossil Fuel, I'm going in to warm up, maybe have a little brandy. I will see you next time. Good morning, everyone. Zero Fossil Fuel. I just wanted to uh, include a brief explanation, something that I forgot to mention yesterday, uh, of what the vacuum actually means on a car. I've got, uh, if you'll notice here, I've got a Stuart Warner vacuum gauge now Velcroed to the side of my center console. We had 12 inches of snow, snow last night, and uh, I was putting together my pump. But uh, the, the part that I wanted to mention to you, and if the camera shakes, it's because I'm going over ice ruts on the highway. Sorry about that. Road crews still have a lot of work to do, as you can see. But the gauge indicates vacuum on the intake manifold. At idle, the uh, vacuum uh, the vacuum is at about 18 to 20 inches of mercury. Magic doesn't really start to happen in the cell until you pull a vacuum greater than 20 inches of mercury. But under normal acceleration, I'm, uh, I'm around uh, 10 to 12 inches of mercury, which is not nearly enough vacuum where I want to be to give me the uh, enhancement on the cell that I need while the car is accelerating, hence the need for a pump. 